Now welcome in a man who knows absolutely what it feels like to win in Salt Lake City against the Utes in the Huntsman Center. Jonathan Tavernari, BYU basketball analyst. Welcome back to the show, JT. Appreciate it, guys. Good to see looking you. Looking good. Looking looking dapper. I mean, tie. I, hey, I was, you know, I was corn last time about having a tie, having a suit. <clears throat> I mean, they were wearing ugly Christmas sweaters. So yes. The yes. contrast was. You, <laughs> you know. should have went back at them like, hey, you know, I'm. Dressed like I this, did, yeah. and you've got the Christmas sweaters. They are nice Christmas sweaters. Though. Yeah, they're not bad. So they're not bad. Unfortunately, <laughs> I just went to the bookstore. They're they're uh, back order because they're selling so much, right? So hey, hey. bookstore, can I, can I get one? Hey, come on. Hey, the I'll official be, outfitter of BYU, BYU fans, fans everywhere. Of BYU store. Yes. Okay, we'll yes. look into that, JT. Nine games without Yoli Childs. BYU goes six and three, including a win at Houston. Big time wins in Maui against UCLA. Mm -hmm. Bruins aren't great, but still, you beat a name brand, and then BYU shoots the lights out against Virginia Tech. I think that's going to be a quad one win come March when you're looking at the resume. What would you think of the first nine games without Yoli Childs? It's interesting because we're at 6-3. and three. I think I said, in the pro I, I said in the show before that if BYU went 7-2 and two or 6-3, and three, that, would be, that wouldn't be a bad um, stepping stone for you know, Yoli to come in. Um, but we're standing here going, gosh, they could be 8-1. and one. I know. You know, and you made a good point in the previous segment. Um, if they're six and three without Yoli, imagine how good they will be when this man comes back. How does this team not get better? You know, and so um, there is a chemistry issue that, again, you're going to have to involve one of the top 50 players in the country, right? Um, how is Jake going to adapt to be able to run everything through Yoli now, right? I mean, TJ and Yoli part of probably, you know, one of the most emblematic pictures or scenes or plays um, from the rivalry, right? The, 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 the hammer down that Yoli had last year. Um, but it, I think that, um, you know, to the, <laughs> to, the, to the guy previous that said Yoli's going to have 45 and 20. That sounds <laughs> realistic. It, it, right? And so um, uh, hopefully in a couple of years when NCAA <laughs> basketball comes back to the video game, I see it. Sure, sure. Um, but I think I honestly think by knowing Yoli and, and knowing these guys – after the first half, in the, in the second half, everything's going to come back. Because, remember, he's been practicing with the team. And, you know, although he's been taking quite a many reps in the, in the, scouting, you know, the scouting team and the second team, um, but he's been playing with the guys. He knows the system. I mean, he came back for a reason, right? And so I, I don't think chemistry is going to be a, a big issue. I think realistically, in the first half, his nerves are going to be you know, a little bit kind of going high. Um, but I do think that he would have, you know, a double double is extremely, you know, possible. I mean, especially, you know, the caliber of player that Yoli is. One of the reasons that this team has had so much success, especially over, say, the last four games, has been their ability to shoot and shoot at an extremely high level, both from the field and from the perimeter. What do you attribute the increase in shooting for this team? And is it something that you think can carry on? Well, it, there's no secret, right? You have to get in the gym and you have to get shots up in repetition, right? I mean, a lot has been said about um, the technology they're using right now, the shot tracker and so forth. But um, although you cannot replicate <clears throat> game shots in practice, um, it's just a thing about repetition, right? Muscle memory. It's, you know, it's so interesting because now with this huge building right behind us, I mean, guys can get in at any time they want, right? I mean, gone are the days that I had to go to the RB at 6 o'clock in the morning because, you know, we have gymnastics coming in at 7.30. <laughs> and so, but I think that it's repetition. Um, the interesting thing is um, the, the two losses that BYU had that I 100% think they were bad losses. We're talking about San Diego State at home and at Boise. Even though the Aztecs um, are 8-0 and they just beat Creighton and Iowa? I, tell me about the game. How did the game win? Wasn't BYU up the oh, whole no, game? No. You're right. BYU was up the whole game. They started let I forgot the brother's name that start coming in and shooting the leather Jordan off the Shackle. ball. Jordan Shackle. Yeah. Shackle. You know, I mean, he put the shacks on BYU, right? I mean, <laughs> it, it sounded like it because at the end of the game, this kid couldn't be contained. But so the way I look at it, it, it is a bad loss because you're up the whole game. You're playing at home and you're playing great. Zach had his best game of the season up to that point. And so I do consider a bad loss. And yes, they're eight and zero, and you know it may end up being a quad, maybe a low quad one or a high quad two win, but we are not there yet. Um, but the thing is that in those games when the ball wasn't going in from the perimeter, now they have somebody to put the ball in a post, right? I do think that Jake needs to be idolized more on the post and less on the pick and roll. Okay. But I do think that now 
you're getting your, you know, your shiny new toy that, you know, you just get. Just in time for just, Christmas. Right? And so you're getting your shiny new toy that just so happens to be a double-double machine and just so happens to be one of the top players in the country. I mean, it's, let's not get started, you know, just how dumb fold I am about the NCAA and this entire thing. But, you know, I think that to the previous point, how BYU does not take one, two, or three steps forward now with this guy. You know, we have to be realistic. Tonight's game, it's a rivalry game, um, his first game back. And so, much like I said about Jake Tulson, we have to give him a little bit of time to kind of get acclimated to everything. However, big picture, thinking about what you guys mentioned about St. Mary's, about Gonzaga, going forward, it how can you not take steps forward with Yoli back? Utah head coach Larry Kristkoviak opted to defend Yoli largely one-on-one -on -one last year. They didn't bring the double team a lot, and he made the Utes pay. So what do you anticipate they will do tonight against Yoli Chai? Do I get in trouble by saying that I don't think he's a smart man? <laughs> I mean, I you know, just let's not get started the whole, you know, buyout and this and that. And so it's just – I just um, – you make choices. The interesting thing about this Utah team is that they're going to be good – but they're not very good right now. I mean, if you look at their top three, four players, um, Timmy Allen. Uh, Who's averaging 19 a game. Um, Ryland, the kid from Olympus that went undefeated. He last season in high school here in Utah. Um, Boff, I'm not, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Um, all these guys are very good, but they're only sophomores. Young. Right? And so I think this is a good time for BYU to go in at the Huntsman Center. It's a big rivalry game. I know Utah doesn't get a whole lot of crowds, but, you know, the, the big blue comes to town and, you know, those, those people up north kind of get riled up. So I think that it's a good opportunity for BYU to go in. Um, if, if The thing is, if you double team Yoli, there are so many shooters on this team, right? And I'm a firm believer that it, if you're taking open shots, you need to keep taking them, right? And so it's uh, – and I know that I, I also took not open shots, you know, so I, <laughs> it's kind of hard for me to say that. Yeah, but what is open, JT? Yeah, well, as soon as you cross half court, I'm open, right? And so um, – but I do think that it, it's a very it, – it's a perfect storm game for Yoli to come back because it's a team that it's perhaps, you know, not a Virginia Tech or a Houston where it's a very – quality opponent, not downgrading Utah. But again, they're young. And I think that this Utah team, maybe next next season, or when all these guys are seniors, they were gonna be a problem to be, you know, yeah. uh, to be to be had. And so it's um but I think that it it would be interesting to see how I'm very excited to see how Yoli handled this. I mean, props to the young man because he has had nothing but you know, integrity and just never, never publicly said a bad word or something negative about the NCAA or the entire process. Hats off to him. But to be able to handle this you know, with the class that he had, it's, you know, it's, it's something that I personally don't know if I could, I could do it. So explain to people what it's like to play in these rivalry games versus Utah. And, and honestly, what, what are, what's maybe your, your biggest memory of a rivalry game? Well, I remember walking in. I'm getting chills talking about it, but I remember walking in my freshman year at the Huntsman Center. Up to that point, we had one day until actually Robbie Reed had the running floater. I think it was like 91 or 92 or something like 94. that. 94. 94. So it had been about 13 years since a BYU team has gone that. And you think about it, McKelly Wesley, Terrell Leday, Travis Hansen, Hoffa, and none of these guys could get it done, right? It's something that I 100% hold over their heads. I'm like, I did it as a freshman, all right? <laughs> and the, the, the crazy thing about it is um, that year, going in there, Keeney Young was a monster. Um, they had a really good, solid team. Um, it was Ray Giacoletti's last year as a coach. But I remember just being excited, you know? And at that point in time, um, I hadn't gotten much playing time as a freshman. Um, and I just, you know, I was – Hyped. I got in. Austin Ainge, you know, fed me a couple of uh, transition backups, like, you know, uh, trailers, and I knock it down. And, you know, I ended up having, I think, 17 or 19 points that game. And and at that point in time, I'm, you remember exactly how many points you Oh, I you remember had. it well. I was watching it from the baseline, man. And so I, and I'm going after the game. I'm all excited. You know, Coach Rose always came and jumped on me in the locker room. And I'm going around. I'm like, playing the New Mexico at the pit. We dominated them. <laughs> And I had a good game with that one as well, so I remember that. And so and I'm like playing against Utah at the Huntsman Center. I'm like, that's chump change, right? And so, but it is a different feeling. It is uh, the the way you know in soccer, everybody calls a derby, right? The big rivalry game, but you approach it differently. The 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 vibe in the building is different. 
Um, it does not matter where the programs stand or conference or whatnot. Every time you play Utah in football and basketball, there's always a different vibe to it. So a story about that game. The first time I ever saw the phrase, Harleen still open, happened in that basketball game because back to Harleen had happened in November of 06. Uh -huh. BYU in early 2007 goes in there. There are like 20 BYU fans behind the BYU bench and it's all red. And I see a kid stand up and raise his sweatshirt up. And there's a t-shirt on it that just says Harleen's still open. That I was like, awesome. that's amazing. That's amazing. And that kid was me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Great stuff. JT, great. we appreciate the uh, insight and the analysis, man. Hey, Good thanks for it. having me. Yeah, I'm uh uh, I'm excited to listen to you on the radio. I hope you do as well as you do uh, calling soccer games. Oh, well, thank so, you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yoli, to, uh, Yoli to TJ. TJ back to Yoli. Yoli goes, let's <laughs> go. <laughs> right. No goals. No goals this yeah. time. Go yeah. No goals. No goals. <laughs> Thanks, JT. Thanks, JT. Coming up, buy, sell.